Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Science Class Live. Today I'm going to focus on Grade 9 Science Syllabus. It is the fourth unit of Grade 9 Science Syllabus. Basic concepts associated with force. Right, dear children, have you ever heard about the term force? What is meant by force? Do you know? Right. Today, we are going to discuss what is force and how to measure the force, the SI unit of force and what are the applications of force and also effects of force. So I invite you, please watch this video. At the end of this video, you will be able to solve all the doubts related to the concept force. Right. What is force actually? Right, do you know? Normally, basically, you can say that force is a push or a pull. So where we apply a push, where we apply a force in our day-to-day -day life activities, we have to push certain objects and also we have to push certain objects. Right. Then, what are the examples that we apply a force in our day-to-day -day life? Let's remember. As mentioned in this diagram, you can watch, you can recall your memory. What is that? When pushing a ball, when pushing a vehicle, when throwing a ball, when hitting to a ball and also there are many examples what are they when lifting a certain object when throwing a javelin in those examples we have to apply force right do you know that force is also called as a vector quantity why is that why is that because the quantities with a magnitude and a definite direction are called as vector quantities. What is meant by magnitude? The value, the quantity force has a magnitude. So how can we measure the magnitude of a force? What is the instrument? Right. I'm going to show you the instrument. This is the instrument. Newton balance. We can hang the balance at rest on a ceiling or particular uh, bar. And then the material that we want to measure, we have to hang this. For example, I'm going to measure the weight of this water bottle using the Newton balance. Then we can hang this on the hook. Then we can observe that the weight it says that the weight of this balance is it appears as 400 grams 400 grams equal to 4 newtons then you can understand how to measure the weight of an object using the newton balance or spring balance likewise you can measure the weight of all the objects in your day-to-day uh, -day life using the Newton balance. Let's move to the concept force again in detail. Do you know my dear children, force has many effects. What are the effects of force? What can we do on an object by applying a force? By pushing or by pulling? What can we do? What are the effects of force? Can you think right? I'll tell you some examples. Do you know by using a force we can move an object at rest and also by using a force we can stop a moving object. For example, think about a car which is a toy car. If it is rest on the table we can apply a little force and we can move it. Similarly, think about a toy car which is moving towards us. 
By applying a little force, we can stop that moving car. These are the two main effects of force. What else? What are the other effects? Think about when playing cricket, a ball is coming towards the batsman. Then what does the batsman do? The batsman apply a force by using the cricket bat and change the direction of that ball. That means the third effect of force is what? Changing the direction of a moving object. What else we can do by using a force? Right. Think about a toy car. If it is moving slowly, what can we do? By applying a force, we can increase the speed of that toy car. Similarly, if an object is moving fast, what can we do? We can pull it from its backside and we can decrease its speed. The another two effects of force are increasing the speed of a moving object and also decreasing the speed of a moving object. Is that all? that we can do by using a force? No, there's another effect. What is that? Can you suggest? Right. The last effect that we can do by using a force is changing the shape of an object. For example, think about a duster or reform. So, normally a reform or a box shaped sponge we can apply a force and change its shape and think about any other glass a glass what can we do by hitting to the glass we can break down this glass that means another effect of force is the change of shape now let's recall all the things that we studied so far what can we do on an object by applying a force? What is force? A push or a pull, right? First one, as I told you, you can remind. First one, by applying a force, we can move an object at rest. Second one, by applying a force, a moving object can be stopped. Third one, by applying a force, the direction of a moving object can be changed. Fourth one, by applying a force, the speed of a moving object can be increased. Fifth one, by applying a force, the speed of a moving object can be reduced. Right. The last one, by applying a force, the shape of an object can be changed. Right. These are the basic effects that we can do on an object by applying a force. Let's move to the next concept. As I told you earlier, the magnitude of the force can be measured by using the instrument Newton balance. You watch that. Right. Then what is the unit? that we can use to measure the force. As I told you earlier, the SI unit of measuring force is Newtons. The Newton is used as honor for the great scientist Isaac Newton because he is the person, he is the scientist who contributed deeply for about the force. Right. Then, if we want to study more information about force we should focus on the basic facts related to the force there are three basic facts what are they the first one as we learned earlier force has a magnitude second one any force has a definite direction third one a force has a point of application. When considering all these three factors, the effect of the, the force can be changed. Let's talk about the first fact 
what is that magnitude of force magnitude think about that if you want to push a small toy car we want to apply on a little force that's enough for the movement of this toy car think about if you want to push a real heavy car which is stalled on the road because of a mechanical fault then what how can we apply so can we apply a little force to move that no it is not enough in this incident we have to get the help of several individuals to push that vehicle or the car for so that means the magnitude of the force should be considered according to the task that we want to do we want to move a little object a small object a less force is sufficient but if you want to move a heavy object a higher or larger quantity of force should be supplied that is the magnitude according to the value of the magnitude the task can be changed right let's focus on the second factor associated with force what is that can you recall that is the direction why is that when applying a force the force must be applied in a definite direction why is that if you want to move this object to the another direction we have to apply the force in north direction we want to move a particular object on the eastern direction we have to apply that force on the eastern direction that is the direction so any force has a magnitude as well as a definite direction that is why i called you earlier force is considered as a vector quantity why is that vector quantities are the quantities with a definite direction and also a magnitude what are the other examples for vector quantities that you know velocity weight those are some examples for vector quantities now let's talk about the third factor associated with the force that is called as point of application of force why is that you can observe as mentioned this diagram when we apply the force on a particular point that point is called as what point of application of force suppose that in these examples though we apply the same magnitude of the force along the same directions the effects of force may change why is that that is because of the changes in the point of application of force as mentioned in this diagram in the first diagram the force is applied in the north direction 100 newton of force what happens the point of application of force is mentioned as a so what happens the object rotates clockwise let's move to the second example the same magnitude of force 100 newton of force is applied in the same north direction so in this example what happened the point of application is b the b means the center of that block in this case what will happen the object moves in forward direction right let's talk about let's draw your attention on the third example in this example same magnitude of force that means 100 newton of force is applied in the same north direction but what's the difference here the point of application is mentioned as c that is the edge of this block, edge of that block so when applying the force on the point c the object shows anti clockwise rotation so through this activities through these diagrams pictures what can you be understand not only the magnitude not only the direction but also the point of application is very important factor when applying a force on an object 
right so you know we can represent the force by using a line diagram graphically how can we draw that as mentioned in this diagram if we want to represent a particular force that we apply on an object using a line diagram we have to consider these factors what is that the length of the line represents the magnitude of the force the length represents the magnitude of the force similarly the point or the dot at the beginning of the segment of line as mentioned in this diagram the point at the beginning of the segment of line represents the point of application of force similarly the arrow hidden at the end of the segment of line represents the direction of force how can we represent a particular force using a line diagram let's see this example when applying 100 newtons of force towards east direction how can we represent it 100 newton of force towards east direction while solving such kind of questions you will be given a particular scale here i am giving you the scale as 10 newton equal 1 centimeter 10 newton equal 1 centimeter then you can observe that how can i draw this force using a line diagram here as i told you earlier 1 centimeter equal 10 newtons you are given 100 newtons so you can understand that 100 newtons equal to 10 centimeters then what we can do we can take our ruler make a dot on the book or the paper then we can draw 10 centimeters of line towards the east direction and at the end of that we can use the arrow to represent the direction of force this is how we represent that's very simple right let's move to another example represent 5 newton of force applied in south direction using a line diagram here the scale is 1 newton equal 1 centimeter then how can we draw that using the line diagram as shown in this diagram you can watch that we have to mark a particular point on the paper and we have to draw 5 centimeters towards south direction why is that as i told you scale is 1 newton equal 1 centimeter and at the end of this line we can represent the arrow hidden to indicate the direction of force this is how we represent whatever the force that we want to represent using a line diagram i hope that you could understand the graphical representation of a force using a line diagram right this is the end of our unit force today we learn several uh, concepts several factors associated with the force i would like to recall your memory right what did we learn today at first we learn about force and the units of force and the magnitude of force and the direction of force and the point of application of force and as a vector quantity force is called as vector quantity and finally we learn about how to represent any force using a line diagram graphically i hope you enjoy the lesson so please subscribe our channel science class life at the end of this video i would like to say you that please brighten your life with the power of science have a nice day